Hey everybody, KC here. So I'm not much of an Olympics guy. Uh, all things considered, I'd rather watch a Mets game. But I have been fascinated by a bit of a kerfuffle that has been taking place in Paris this time around about, of all things, the quality of the food that's being served to athletes. Now, the goal of the organizers was to make the food more sustainable and have more plant-based foods. But athletes have been complaining that they haven't been able to get enough of things like chicken and pasta, you know, protein and carbs that they need to fuel their performance. The British Olympic team apparently has gone so far as to bring in their own chef who is preparing and packing meals off-site that the athletes can then bring back to the Olympic Village, which kind of created its own scandal, uh, you know, about how could the British think that they have better food than the French? Sacre bleu! Um, here's a passage from the Wall Street Journal story. Uh, the idea that Britain, of all places, deigned to criticize French cuisine is tantamount to culinary sacrilege to the palates of the French and most of the rest of the world, the short list of British contributions to gastronomy mainly involved boiled meat, boiled potatoes, and something called spotted dick. To the uninitiated, the last dish is a steamed pudding made with suet and dried fruit. But I have to say, I think that all kind of falls back on an obsolete worldview of modern culinary reality, which is that, you know, because of advances in communication, education, and travel, Every place is capable of having great chefs, great food, and a superior food culture. And by the way, I don't remember any complaints about the food at the London Olympics, which weren't that long ago. By extension, this means that your customers um, everywhere may have expectations of great food. Expectation, they may have a better educated palate and they may have a willingness to try new things. And retailers that kind of fall back on lowest common denominator food may be missing a great opportunity. Uh, they can make new sales by selling new food to new customers. And that's what can happen when you embrace food culture to a greater degree. And I'm not talking about foody, hoity-toity food. Everything can be made better. And it's not necessarily more expensive. You just want food that smells great, tastes great, and has people going, wow, that tasted really good. I want more of it. Or I want other things that they're making because they made this really, really well. You know, as much as I'm not a big Olympics guy, I'm also not a big conspiracy theory guy. But I do like this one which is um, that it's making the rounds about how the French may actually be reserving all the really good proteins and, and, uh, and carbs for themselves in hope that it will legally boost uh, their performance in the games. Um, that's actually pretty funny, though in the words of Inspector Clouseau, there is a time to laugh and a time not to laugh, and this is not one of them. That's what's on my mind, and as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.